So if price isn't moving yet, but you're seeing block buys go off, and really, let's be fair, that's that's probably one of the only ways you're going to get some big volume without price moving. But if blocks are going off, 100,000 share blocks, a million share blocks, that's telling you that some institution is loading the boat there. And again, the next step would be is, okay, look at the chart. If it's going sideways and it's been very quiet, is it has it created a bull flag? If it has, you have to jump on, on top of that and you have to ride that. Bitcoin fell prior to the February 3rd Wall Street Open as fresh United States economic data came in hot, hot, hot. The pair reacted negatively to U.S. unemployment data for January, which beat expectations so considerably that overall jobless figures fell to their lowest since 1969. Non-farm payrolls data likewise outperformed, while average hourly earnings conformed to forecast 0.3% growth. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, founder and chief market strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com and verified crypto investing Gareth Soloway updates about Bitcoin's current market standing, the final bottom in crypto, and his outlook for Bitcoin in 2023. You know, one of the things that I noted was that the insanity around Bitcoin. In addition, another factor was I looked back at 2017's high, and one of the interesting things about 2017's high was that the high was made and it coexisted with the launch of the futures on Bitcoin. And sure enough, in 2021, in October, when we were talking, they were just launching the futures ETF on Bitcoin. And there was so much hype around this. It was going to change all the average investors were going to be able to jump on board, even if they didn't have crypto accounts to be able to trade the ETF. And obviously that added to the hype. So hype was number one. I was noticing it. it made me very uncomfortable. The same sort of hype that I saw in the late 90s, early 2000s, when the dot-com bubble was going to burst. The same hype we saw in housing in 2007 before it collapsed. So you, when, when you're through enough of these bubble and busts, you start to recognize the emotional attachment and exuberance, irrational exuberance, to use Greenspan's term, of what's going on, and that that is a warning sign in and of itself. So that's the first thing. I was, I was on alert. The second thing is if we go to this chart, mm -hmm. notice how we made new highs from the early 2021 high, but there's something called the confirmation signal. This is something I, I teach in my course, the Winning Trader series. But look at how this high here, all right? Notice how you closed above the high and then you reversed. And then you closed above the high here again. It tried to break out again and you never got a higher close. So the confirmation signal, and I'm just going to give you guys a crash course in this. What basically you need to do, you have to have a close above the, above the key pivot, which was this trend line, which you saw here and here. And then you need a secondary close at a higher high. Pivot, higher high here. Notice how that never happened over here. And to me, that was telling me institutions were dumping into it. If you think about how much irrational exuberance and buying there was from the retail crowd at these highs, this Bitcoin chart should have blown through that level if the, if the institutions were not dumping into it. The long story short, without confirmation, it was not a true breakout. And in fact, it turned out to be a classic M pattern top, right? Double top, M pattern top. Which again, in technical analysis, when you learn it, you start to pay very close attention to those type of pattern tops, especially when you have negative divergences. And let me just speak about this real quick. What's the negative divergence? The negative divergence was that in April of 2021, when you were at 65,000, you had hype. When you were at the same level at, at in price, you had basically double or triple the hype. So what I'm saying is the hype was higher but the price was not matching that. It was a negative divergence in price. And again, you can even look at the RSI and you can see this negative divergence building as well. So these are key things that, again, it doesn't come overnight, but I always tell people 10 minutes a day of learning how to read charts in one year, you will blow your mind at how good you have become. I look back at my younger self and I'm like, dude, what the heck was I thinking back then? Why did I even think I should trade back then before I learned this stuff? Bitcoin's cold feet came from the implication that a stronger-than-forecast labor market allows the Federal Reserve to maintain tighter, less liquid monetary conditions for a longer period of time. U.S. economy sliding into a recession? Well, think again. At least not in the near term, economist and analyst Jan Wustenfeld continued. 
Yeah. So, and, and this is this is this is still something I struggle with today. And I think it's important to recognize is that no one ever just because I'm considered a master trader or a pro trader, it doesn't mean that I'm not continually trying to hone my skills and learn. And one of my biggest faults in my trading, and this is something I'm always actively trying to remedy, is that I see the big picture, and I'm good at that. And you guys that watch my interviews, you know that I can tell you, okay. This is the likely outcome. Yes, the inflation was not going to be transitory. The markets are going to do likely this. And generally, I'm correct. My timing is something that I'm still working on as a trader. A good example of this was, I believe it was last year in early 2022, I was talking to you about how much I love China. I love the China stocks. They were beaten up at the time. And, and the reality of it is, the viewpoint of mine was that, yes, these things are going to rip higher. Eventually, the government will get off of their crackdown on these companies. Uh, what I didn't foresee is the, the lockdown of COVID, and that pushed the Chinese stocks lower. Now, granted, they've all ripped higher since then, but my goal in, as a pro trader is to get my timing better. And it's always something that's a work in progress, but you have to be able to see the big picture, but then figure out, okay, well, you don't want to be too early. And by the way, you see this with a lot of people like like uh, 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 Peter Schiff or, or, uh, or uh, Michael Burry. Like, they're telling you that these crashes are coming. And generally, they're going to be right, but it's about timing it, right? If you're too early, the question is, can you stay liquid enough or do you go broke before the, the play actually trades out? And the biggest thing to me, and this is something I've learned, and this is the most important thing I will say, is make sure you don't put all your eggs in one basket, especially with the price of eggs these days, right? You want to make sure that you reallocate, you allocate small amounts of money to different areas so that you do not kind of go boom or bust on one trade. So you can like the Chinese stocks and they can still go down. If you allocate a small percentage of your portfolio, it's not the end of the world. You want to be unemotional, analyze that chart and go from there. Bitcoin is currently priced significantly lower than it was in late 2021. Still, the mood in the market is as positive as it was back then. That's the message from funding rates, a mechanism that keeps the prices of Bitcoin perpetual futures contracts in sync with the spot market price. When perpetual figures are trading above spot, the funding rate is positive and holders of bullish long or buy positions pay bearish shorts to keep their trade open. The opposite happens when the perpetuals trade below the spot price. Analysts track the funding rate to gauge the mood of leverage traders. The higher the funding rate, the more excited traders are about price prospects and the more willing to pay a premium to keep their upside bets open. So the way I hedge, and this adds a great question, I mean, so the way I hedge is honestly by by limiting the amount that I'm putting in. So anytime you're investing, and this is this is something I did with the China trades as well, is that I'm investing a small percentage of the overall account, right? So that if that doesn't work out and it goes down, it's almost like you're hedging because you're still investing like, you know, my biggest calls are gold and, and you know, some of these other things. And we started to see that really play out. And in fact, gold in 2022 was probably the best safe haven you could have been in, frankly. So- so I think the key is to hedge. For me, I'm not a big person of buying like, you know, options to kind of offset the risk because if I'm right 80 or 70% of the time, then all that does is take away from my gains by paying for that hedge. The way I hedge is I just invest the proper amount and proper asset allocation is the number one thing for investors along with discipline. And in fact, they go hand in hand together. So what are your thoughts about Gareth Soloway's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.